You hear that? Thunder. <laughs> the thunder rolls. So quite enough week this week in the lines of videos. Kinda took a wee bit of a week off. Uh, so just a wee bit of an update just on what's gonna be going on all week. Not very much to be honest because I've been kinda kinda busy with uh, coming at my house and since I came back from Silverstone anyway. Uh, Jerry's here on the 2850. Driving a big lunatic. Uh, we had a little issue with the 2850. All that lying up for like seven or eight months didn't do the fuel pump any good on it. Uh, it started spluttering and acting up. All the work we done to it, and uh, yeah, we had a wee issue with the fuel pump. But uh, sensible way to get it fixed. A uh, couple of smart fellas, there's plenty of them out there, uh, noticed that. Uh, we had a set of vice grips on the on the baler when it was being used. Uh, the baler's kind of parked outside at the minute. We have hay parked inside and different things. Not ideal, but it's just the way it is. Uh, yeah, no such vice grips here. And you can see there's a whole mechanism here for uh, you can adjust adjusting this here just the size uh, lengthwise of the bale. So uh, there's a. There's a little screw in here, but it's it's been rung on it for long and long. Now, very rarely do you ever have to need to adjust the bale size, and uh, it always it, it's been rung on it for years. We have the bale of ten years. It's been rung on it since before we got it. This bale is 1992, and uh, yeah, it's been rung on it. We have it since 04, and it's been rung on it since before then. So it was never really an issue. But we have a second bale uh, for parts, and this old piece of it is like new. Uh, whereas this one here then obviously has the issue with it. Uh, well, I don't know what happened there, the, the camera stopped recording. But anyway, uh, yeah, we we took the this piece here, this whole section of the, the other baler, the donor baler or the spare part baler. Uh, it was like new. Uh, the the little part in here didn't have to be heated anything. It just opened freely uh, and everything looked perfect. Just bolted it all onto it. Set it at the same setting as what this one here has always been set at. Went to the field, bale wouldn't not a bale. <laughs> wouldn't not a bale. Spent two hours messing around with wouldn't not a bale. Eventually, we uh, like this baler never throws any loose bales out. It, if you baled a thousand bales with it, there wouldn't be a loose one. Well, one loose one maybe in it. Maybe sometimes if the cord was changing over from uh, one ball to another, uh, it can sometimes at that point maybe throw loose one loose cord on a bale or something like that. But uh, would be trouble free that way. Uh, but yeah, we ended up having to loose the the donor piece off and put it, this own piece back on. Uh, and at that point, uh, this here had been messed around with, and uh, yeah, we had to hold it together with a pair of vice grips. So that was the story of why the why the vice grips were on the bailer. We also got a flat tire on the bailer, so we had to take the. This is the spare wheel, uh, or the wheel of the donor bailer, or the, the spare spare part bailer. Uh, we had to get a new tire on its own, on its own rim. So, yeah, just the tire was old. It might have got a little bit of a nick on a stone or something, but it just blew out on uh, while we were doing a little bit of bailing for a neighbour of ours. So that's it. Yeah, we'd have to get the bailer back inside. Not not good for it sitting outside. Uh, yeah. What else are we doing this week? I'll head over here and we'll see. Yeah, so harvesters outside as well. Everything that is outside that shouldn't be outside uh, to make way for some of the hay. Uh, yeah, we started cleaning out the cow shed. Uh, it's a good bit of dung lying in it. Uh, we made a bit of a start on Tuesday just to, to clear it out. I cleaned all the dung out of it and uh, started to do a little bit of washing. Uh, it's not that long since it was washed, but uh, we'll wash it again. We have in the back with the calves creep. Uh, it's all been washed down. Uh, David Brown is on washing duty, as you can see. Um, it's a little bit more thunder. It's starting to rain quite heavily now. Um, yeah, but yeah, we're going to just wash all this down. We'll disinfect it then once once it's all finished. So we go washed in here as well. Uh, but yeah, good bit still to be done. All in these pens here and. Uh, then we'll scrape out the wee bit of muck down over the slats. Uh, kind of dampen it down a few times, just to leave it easier to scrape. And uh, once that's done, uh, it, it'll wash right down very easily. Uh, still have a little bit of effluent coming through the wall. Very, very little. It's all more or less stopped now, but you know this old white stuff that kind of cakes on it once, uh, 
once it starts going slowly moving. Uh, yeah, there was quite a bit of effluent for the first week or 10 days out of it. There was probably three, either maybe three or four tankers we had to take out of this tank and just spread them on the grass. Um, but over the last two to three weeks, we took one load out when we come back on, uh, on Tuesday. Uh, and yeah, it's fairly slow now at this stage. It's only a trickle into it. So uh, it should dry up, I'd imagine, over the, the next few days. Uh, so that's kind of what's been going on uh, over, the last, over the last week or so. We still have to draw quite a bit of our hay. Uh, we have got some of it. Some of it is sold, some is gone, some is still in the field. We haven't had time to, to just get out and, and, and draw it. Uh, you need the weather to be kind of half dry, which it isn't at the minute. Uh, we've had not much rain over the past few days, but a little bit. And uh, that's kind of hampering us just in drawing it in. We want the bales to be kind of dry on the, on the edges before we take them in. Uh, but forecast is fairly okay over the weekend. I'd say tomorrow we'll get to, we'll get to draw, draw them in and we'll put them in the, in the sheds. Uh, we're going to, some of the ones we've already baled are pre-sold. Uh, we have 60 sold to one guy, we have to store them. And I'm going to actually store them in here at the back. Uh, he'll want them early on in the, in the winter. So uh, we're not going to be using this part here uh, for creeping calves until after Christmas. So uh, it'll, it should be okay to, to store them here. And then we can take them out as we need them. Uh, and then we have a, a three link hay shed then that we can fill with bales as well. So um, that's, that's kind of the plan with that. Uh, we've got a good bit of hay still to make. We've got something just over 30 acres made and we've got about the same again, which is absolutely ridiculous. We don't want that amount of hay. Uh, we usually have around maybe 40 to 50 acres, but over 60 is just too much and we're going to Reduce it back, hold it back, because like everything else in farming, it's uh, it's not easy to uh, not easy to to sell anything in farming at the minute, whether it be cattle or hay or, or anything. Uh, still have some of our beef cattle still here, uh, fit to go, ready to go. Can't get rid of them. Factories won't take them. Uh, as if things isn't bad enough, you can't get rid of them. Uh, selection of bullocks all in here. Uh, most of them are all ready to go. Uh, can't get rid of them. Uh, these guys here, all ready to go. Can't get rid of them. So, a mess. Uh, we've also got a batch of bullocks. Oh, sorry, bulls, which uh, we had grazing outside, which we put in. And uh, they're in a little over a week, so they have went back now since they come off the grass and adjusting onto the meal. The field, which really is the norm when uh, you put cattle in from grass. Uh, why did we put them in? Because they were ranting, tearing the ditches, and doing everything that bulls do when they get in numbers and the weather isn't great. So, uh, yeah, fighting with each other. And they're settling down now, but uh, it'll take another week or so before we'll start to see them filling out again. Uh, you see their sides are a little bit caved in there just from after being put in, which is uh, annoying to see because they were in great condition when they went in, but it's just all part of it. It'll take a couple of weeks just for them to start moving again in the right direction. Uh, that's, really, that's really all that's been going on. Uh, most of our heifers are all gone, which I suppose is the only, the only good thing. Some of them are starting to go over fast. There's a few left over. Um, and. Yeah, we got those away a few weeks ago, but as I say, we haven't been able to get any more away since. So, I was hoping to show you this pit of stuff, uh, but it's actually teeming down with rain. Uh, it's rattling another bit of thunder there just before I started recording this uh, last bit. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't really fancy getting soaking wet, but anyway, uh, this pit of stuff, about a third of it now is used up, you can see, uh, maybe a little over a third of it. Um, and back uh, the end of May, we needed to to work on something to to, to have as a feed uh, rather than our silage over the summer. Uh, silage, of course, uh, for new first cut silage was going to be going into the pit, covering the the last little bit of silage that was still there. 
and uh, that was going to leave us then we had no access to any feed for uh, the livestock that was inside uh, so this was the this was the replacement we got um, some maize silage uh, some sugar beet uh, also some uh, potatoes and a little bit of uh, soya hulls as well so that was the the, the mixture that we done and mixed it into this pit of stuff and uh, yeah we left it then to sit for a number of weeks before we started to use it but very very happy with the feed it's working out very well it's uh, that's actually you might see some of it here in the, the feed material it's it is really nice stuff all i've added to it is straw for these cattle that have just went inside uh just a bit of fiber for them but yeah it's a really really nice nice feed uh, there's a lovely a lovely smell of it's almost like an alcohol smell of it where it's uh, fermented really nicely and uh, yeah very happy with how that has worked out uh, the only thing i would do differently i'd cover it a little bit better than what we did uh, there's a little bit of bad just here at the sides uh, with the tires out should have and across the top not much you can actually feed it in and it, it doesn't it, it never shows up in the feed it's only a very small layer but uh, again if i was doing it i'd probably put a lot more tires on with some sandbags around it and just seal it a little bit better have a little bit more airtight and uh, maybe tramp it a little bit as well put it in more in layers and, and drive the teleporter over it and, and try and tramp it and um, that's the only two things i'd probably do a little bit differently but overall very happy with how it's worked out and uh, yeah it's 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 proven very very good to have um, but yeah that's really it uh, might go up here and see if we can have a look at the, the 2850 and see if Jerry got it sorted yet. The more heavy thunder, lightning there, you've seen it as well. We've got the works here at the minute and rain. We don't we don't get much thunder or lightning here in Ireland. We never we don't have that hot humid weather usually that, that brings it on. But uh yeah, we get the wee bit of it <laughs> get the wee bit of it this evening. Uh yeah. All the work that was done the twenty eight fifty, all the man hours that we spent at it, doing everything. But the only thing that we didn't do was the fuel pump. And it acted up there uh, during the week after we went back to work. Or not during this week, a couple of weeks ago after we went back to work. Uh, done some of the baling of hay and was back in the feeder and doing a few jobs. And yeah, there we were. We, we noticed a couple of... Uh, the tractor was down a little bit on power and a couple of things were down on power and uh, a bit spluttery when ticking over and uh, yeah, sent it away and uh, got it all reconditioned. Uh, there's a... A little rotor in the top of it, got very hard to get one of them, uh, put a new one into it and uh, yeah, it's back now on the tractor and everything seems to be alright. We've driven up and in the yard a couple of times, but we'll maybe try and, try and use it a bit tomorrow, put it back in the feed up, see how it, see how it runs, how it goes. So, yeah, just when you think you're finished, you're never finished. So that's really it. Uh, finished for this evening and uh, yeah, I have a little bit of footage from Silverstone last week. And uh, yeah, I'll put that off. Just a few different wee bits of clips that I took uh, of different corners I was sitting at. And uh, we were also in the support paddock. Uh, and, uh, there was, we got to see some of the Porsches and some of the old Formula One cars up close. Uh, and there's some of those being rolled out as well. So yeah, put all them up over the week uh, that's coming. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And yeah, we'll see you over the weekend. Be loading bales hopefully tomorrow if it dries up. And uh, a few other bits and pieces. See you tomorrow.